It's literally, it's water. Hey guys, how are you? I wanted to take a second to talk about something that I've been thinking about for a while. Before, I, um, I didn't really have, I don't wanna say I didn't have the opportunity to talk about it, but something super unfortunate and super sad actually recently happened that is kind of this weird happenstance that kind of opens a little bit of a doorway for me to talk about this. If any of you guys are in the um, K-pop circle or K-pop fandom, you will probably have heard by now that Kim Jong-hyun of uh, Shiny has passed away and his death is being ruled a suicide. So I just wanted to take a second to kind of talk about um, specifically mental health in Asia and um, how it's viewed here. Um, because, you know, for, the, for anybody, I don't know that this video will have brought in anybody that doesn't already watch my videos, but for anyone who doesn't know, I'm an American currently living in China. Um, and I often talk about mental health and those types of things in my videos. I usually talk about um, mental health in terms of, you know, an American perspective, an American living in America, um, which is a different perspective of an American living in Asia, um, which is even further from, you know, an Asian person with an Asian background living in Asia. Um, so those are some things that I kind of want to talk about. On just like a personal side note, this doesn't really have much to do with the content of the video, um, but I just wanted to say, you know, since their debut, I've really been a big Shiny fan, and I think that that group is something that kind of transcended all the different generations of K-pop fans that there were. Um, you know, everyone knows Shiny. I've never met someone that didn't like Shiny, um, and I just, you know, and I was lucky enough several years ago, probably like five, six years ago, God, I don't remember. I was in college, um, but I got to see them uh, live and it was, you know, a really incredible experience and I'm glad that I got that. And also on a second kind of personal note, I've seen a lot of comments and stuff on social media that are along the lines of like, oh, you know, I'm not even like, um, you know, I'm not that much into Shiny, but this still makes me sad. Or like, oh, I don't really care for Jonghyun, but, um, you know, this is still a shame or whatever. I just want to say that if you're saying something like that, you should really be ashamed of yourself. This is not a time for like, oh, you know, I'm a BTS fan, but, you know, I feel this way. Or, you know, I'm VIP, but, you know, like, this is still sad. No. Like, we're not, we're not gonna approach it that way. Somebody died. Like, a person, a, a living person that, you know, had their own feelings and thoughts and had people that loved them is dead. A family is without their son and without their brother and people are without their friend now. And, you know, they did this to themselves feeling that they had no other way to cope, feeling that there was no way out. That's really awful and it, it's not it, it goes well beyond whether you're a fan or not you know you should if this happens to a person that they feel that this is their only route to take you should feel bad regardless let's just say that like take your backhanded sympathy elsewhere because it's not needed but anyway that's my own little personal feeling about that so moving on to what i'm actually trying to talk about now <laughs> is um, this idea of how stigmatized mental health issues are in Asia. So a lot of my videos I've talked about, you know, kind of breaking down a stigma. And I just mean in like, in my own culture, like in America or, you know, whatever. I, this is, because obviously this is what I'm from. These are the terms that I think of it in, um, is, you know, from an American standpoint in my own culture, that's what I'm talking about. But really it's a worldwide issue. But I just wanna say that, you know, even though we have a really long way to go in America or, you know, in lots of places in the world, we are still light years ahead of some of the um, mental health programs and just general understanding of the significance of mental health um, in lots of parts of Asia. And unfortunately, when something like this happens, and it happens very, very often in places like South Korea, everyone is all gung-ho about it for a little while, you know, saying like, the industry has to change, or, you know, we need better um, education and we need better resources for um, helping people with mental health issues in these places and, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, like I said, everyone's really gung-ho about it for a minute in time and then it kind of disappears 
dissipates and fades away and then no one says anything about it until it happens again. Um, and you know, he, unfortunately Kim Jong-hyun is just the latest in a long list of celebrities that have committed suicide and there are, you know, many more that have attempted suicide as well. It's, it's a really sad state of affairs and you know, I'm not gonna, beyond this I'm really not tailoring this video to to Korea or China or, you know, anything specific. I have a couple different um, examples that I want to talk about from different parts of Asia that kind of pertain to me specifically that I think are worth talking about. And um, they all kind of just show a lack of understanding and a lack of kind of resources for a lot of people. So the first thing that really kind of stands out in my mind and that I'll never really forget, I think, when I first made the decision, or not really the decision to move to China, but when, you know, everything started really happening, like when I got accepted into my graduate program and, you know, I was filling out all my paperwork and stuff and I was like, wow, this is, this is actually happening. Like I'm actually moving to the other side of the world for a couple years. You know, I, I talked to my Chinese American friend and she had lived in China probably up until the beginning of high school, maybe, I'm not entirely sure. And then she moved to, the states and continued school there and we met in college and I kind of confided in her I was you know that I have problems with depression and anxiety and a lot of you know issues kind of along those lines and I was a little bit worried about finding um, you know help for it and I knew it was just something that you know when it when it all started really happening I was like you know but with my with my history if I have some kind of crisis or if I need to talk to somebody, like, what am I going to do? Um, for a couple reasons. I mean, one, where I live, it's not super developed. I mean, it is, it, it really is, but um, not in that way. Like, not in the way that like resources are there, you know? And then also it's like a big cultural thing. Like it's not really, I can't really just go up to somebody and start talking about it. And so I, you know, asked her, you know, what, what she thought about it. She kind of had, unfortunately, like one of the worst reactions she really could have. And it's not really her fault. Like I can't, I can't fault her for her cultural understanding or her, you know, kind of, it, it really comes down to ignorance about the significance of this type of thing. Um, she told me that uh, Chinese people don't get depressed and they don't have anxiety because they're so busy that they just don't have time to feel that way that, you know, they have, too many other things to occupy their time. And I was like, it's not how it works, actually. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, but that's not how it works. A mental illness doesn't care whether you're, you know, a busy parent, whether you're sitting, you know, on your couch all day, whether you're a big CEO, whether you have three jobs that you go to, one right after the other, it doesn't care, it doesn't matter. Um, it does not discriminate. And I think, you know, using this, super prominent pop star as an example is like the perfect example for that because he was someone that was extremely successful, um, extremely well loved, extremely talented, and just, you know, this all around incredible person who seemed they had this incredible personality. Um, and you know, it, it just, it, it didn't matter. It, it still got to them, unfortunately, and it should really never get that far. Um, cause there's this, this big idea of like, oh, well just deal with it here. Like it, it, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not important, you know? And that's really concerning because that's kind of a really difficult idea to change in people. It's a really, you know, as a cultural idea where many people think this way, it's, it's a very difficult thing to kind of try to tackle. Also, I want to point out kind of the next thing that I wanted to say was in, in making all of my um, mental health videos, I get comments and messages on any platform that people can find me on all the time that, you know, is somebody saying that they're from, name a country in Asia, they're from, you know, this country. And they're like, you know, there's no, there's nothing available to me. There's no resources available. And, you know, they just happen to find my, channel and, you know, searching for, you know, help for their symptoms or wanting to understand what's going on with them. And it has to do with resources, has to do with cultural things like we've talked about. And, you know, I remember specifically, I got 
this one message from a man who I, th I think he said that he lived in India. I want to say India. This was maybe a year, a little more ago. Um, and he was like, you know, I'm writing to you. I found your videos, not for me, but for my sister. And he was like, my sister has recently started taking medication for her problems. And he goes, how do I get her to stop? How do I get her to see that that's not suitable? I was like, what do you mean that's not suitable? You know, like she is doing what she can in a culture that, you know, from my own understanding from people that have, that I know that are from India, um, that have told me that, you know, this is not something that is socially acceptable to really talk about, um, is something, you know, that they can't really, you know, seek help for. And now this, this girl is going against, you know, what is culturally acceptable in an effort to help herself. And she starts taking medication or going to therapy or whatever. And you're trying to get her to stop because you don't think it's suitable. Excuse me, I, well, I, you know, I, not everyone is as fortunate as you might be not to be in her position and understand what it means to be in a crisis like that. It's unlike anything that I, I can't describe it. I've tried many times and I, I still feel like I don't give that kind of feeling and that experience justice because it's terrifying. And you know, it takes a strong person to go against their cultural norms or to go against what their family thinks is suitable because they think that it's best for them. And when it comes down to it, you know, the things that are gonna help you are medication. They are therapies, seeking help and getting professionals to guide you in your recovery. And I think that those kinds of interactions kind of really speak volumes for how deeply rooted this kind of problem is. Like I said, you know, going back to Kim Jong-hyun with a famous person and it's just someone that has every resource at their fingertips still could not find it in them to fight it and still couldn't, you know, find a way to overcome it before it unfortunately took their life. People are literally dying for this cause. People are literally dying because they, they feel that they can't appropriately access help or they can't appropriately um, go about trying to help themselves without being ridiculed or, um, you know, whatever might happen to them. And that's wrong. I mean, that there's no other way. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> it's, it's super sad and it's super unfortunate. And I don't know. It's just, like I said, I think that a lot of places in the world are still way ahead of America in dealing with this issue. And then America somewhere kind of, you know, in the middle. And then there are so many places that are still so far behind and it's just you know how many more people have to have this happen to them how many more people have to lose their life how many people have to lose a family member or a friend or a loved one and yeah that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today i i know that by the time i actually have a vlog a, a clip in a vlog i guess of me reacting my cat and my dog are chasing each other right now I have a clip of me kind of reacting to initially, you know, within like an hour of it being posted online, reading about what happened. Um, but I know that it takes me a long time to get my vlogs together, so that probably won't be out for a while. So while it's kind of still fresh in everyone's minds, I wanted to say something about it. Remember to be kind to people and just try and understand what people are going through and Let's, you know, make this a place where we don't have to feel ridiculed or we don't have to, you know, suffer for the things that we really can't help and that we're trying to change about ourselves. But yeah, on that note, I'm out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.